All right. Miss Effie Josefina Morales. Yeah, I said Josefina. She's in class and she's trying to go to Stanford. You remember at one point she was telling Tariq her dreams and aspirations were to transfer schools, come down to Stansfield, and then from there go out to Stanford. Now, Stanford's out there in the Bay Area. You know what I'm saying? I lived out there for it was a good old time, a little three years out there in the Yay area. But she's trying to go out there. Now, we know school is very, very expensive. We know that she ain't got no money. At one point, she did have a guy. They, they were calling him a trick. Some people were calling him a simp. Some people were calling him like the trick magnet. Uh, he was giving her money for her tuition to pay for Stansfield. Now, I didn't understand that because I know she was on the block hustling. But she's here and she's like, damn, there's one interview spot left. And the professor's like, you know, you should take that. But Effie's like, it's kind of expensive, man. She said, I know it is. It's very, very expensive, but it's an investment on your future. And you're thinking of it as a, you know, saying as a, they, what, 20 years old? Brayden said he was 20 now. You 20 years old. You look in, it's talking about 75,000 for the year. You like 75,000. I ain't got 75,000, but I could get 75,000. I just probably need to go work with Noma. But once she hears it's, it's an investment on her life, we know one thing that, that light bulb, you know, that thing that pops in your head is always on in Effie's head whenever there's a thought that crossed her mind where she can use someone else's money. Effie, we talk about everyone else being selfish. Everyone else is only about them. We talk about Ghost abandoning his family, going to be with Angela, doing what he wanted to do, leaving Tariq, Yaz, and uh, we don't even remember what Tariq's sister's name, Raina, leaving them out to dry leaving Tommy out there, setting up Kane and doing all kinds of wild shit, running for lieutenant governor, setting shit up, having dudes come and rob him and give and take the gun and letting Tate pop him because Ghost didn't care about nobody. Well, Leffy is on that same scale. Now, she will set you up quick, and we have all the documentation going back to her high school years. So we got four to five years of snitching and telling from Effie Morales. But at this point, she needs to figure out what move can she make so she can actually thrive. Because guess what? Noma ain't really giving them no work. Noma told them, fuck Monet. Y'all need to get out here on the block for me. Y'all need to go after Tariq. But she started to realize that Kane ain't going to give up until he gets Tariq. She still likes Tariq because one thing we know about Tariq is if, if any woman throws that thing on Tariq, oh, Tariq is weak. And we sang the song yesterday. I get so weak in the knees. Yeah, they were singing that at the damn con uh, candy shop. So now Effie's like, all right, let me go ahead and take this. Take this last interview spot. Let me try to talk to Tariq, talk some sense into him since the truce is down. Maybe I can get on his good side. Maybe Tariq got a little bit of money. He can help me out. Maybe Tariq can help me get next to Noma and then Noma will see that I'm a good investment and start to invest into me. But we all know. We all know that Effie is, she's a piece of work. She's a piece of work. Look good, but she's a piece of work. Uh, the next time we seen Effie, they were in class. Uh, I don't know, man. The classroom scene, I think I'm kind of done with the classroom scenes. We had three years of watching them in the class and nautical studies or whatever the hell class they were in. Now this is talking about leadership. Everyone's chiming in. And it, to me, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an overall representation of the episode. And Tariq becoming a leader. Effie's trying to be a leader. Diana's trying to be a leader. But she really can't be a leader because <laughs> she's about to be leading something else, a little one into this world. In the case of five-month-old Jemiah, Julius, you are not the <laughs> Nah, Effie, I don't, I don't know if Effie's her... I mean, that's a that's a weird name. Effie. That's like your first name. Effina. Effina. Josephina. Morales. I don't know. Maybe Effie is short for something else. But they all in the class. And for me, it was just I was listening to it. Like, OK, Therese talking about defeat. You know, saying after you defeated, you become a leader. Chandra is talking about greed. I've never been in any of my classes. I, I, I never liked these where it was just a. A open discussion you know the professor will present a question and then people just start answering i never liked that i never spoke up i i didn't have anything to say i just listened that's how i used to look like to read 
they be going around. I'd be sitting in the back of the class because I was older when I went to college. So I was what, 30, I was 33 when I went to Arizona State. So I just in there, I just listened to everybody else talk. I wasn't participating. I was just like, man, I'm just here to get the notes, to try to pass these tests. I don't need to be in the open discussion. I'm not learning nothing from this. So I was just like Tariq in the back like this. Hey, hey, uh, Mo, do you have anything? Oh, no, I'm good, sir. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, just tuning in. But after the class, Effie pulls up on Tariq. And this is the scene that we got this week that was released. And we know that Tariq finally stood on business with her. And we got big business. Now, she comes out here and she's talking to Tariq. She's like, Tariq, we need to talk. And I ain't going to lie to you. When I first seen that clip, I was thinking that Tariq was going to fold. You know what I mean? Wait a minute. Hold up. Paul, Paul's the story. Effie's financial struggles is fade because she is a hacker and probably has so much money hidden. She was stealing from high-end stores with fake credit cards. And on top of that, Patrice, remember she was saving every time they had a deal because there was one season. Someone tell me what season it was where people were going back and forth with me because I was saying that Effie was stealing from Noma. What was that episode? I mean, season. Was it season three? Remember, Effie was saving money and Effie was stealing money off the top of what Tariq and them were getting from Noma. But then again, she got in the Mary hoodie on. That's right. Her and Diana went shopping with the credit cards. She was stealing from Noma when they had all cap, no frap, or all all frap, no cap, whatever way it was. It was it went up under. Yeah, where is Effie's money? Effie should have at least a hundred bands saved up. They were moving big weight season three. See, we got to open that investigation. Give me, let me, let me write this down. I have a note to myself. You know, I feel like Don Carter right now. Note to myself. <laughs> Effie Sticky Finger Morales. <laughs> okay, Effie. We need to go look into Effie's funds. We got to go see how much she says she was saving from each. Because remember, she was driving the bucket in season two. And that's before she transferred schools in season three because Tariq was like, that's what you're driving. After her and Brayden got back cool, they was in the room and she was talking to Brayden. And then the whole thing happened with, with Lauren. Oh, it happened with Lauren at the end of season two. Oh, Effie. Yeah, this investigation is open now, darling. I'm sorry. We need to go see how much money she told Tariq she was saving. She was driving in the bucket because she was saving up to go to Stanford. Oh, and Tariq was like, no, nah, you should transfer schools to come. Oh, okay. And then she got the money from Kane last season. Oh, Effie. Oh, it's a paper trail now. It is a paper trail now. Effie's money. Yeah, she told us there was a number that she was trying to reach in season three. Kane gave her money for the tuition. She told Tariq there was a number that she was trying to get. She was saving money. And we found out that she was skimming off the top. And Tariq was letting her because everyone was saying, oh, Mo, it's not stealing. But it was stealing because that money was supposed to go to Noma. Even though it was money that they made over, you're supposed to still give it to the top dog. And then the top dog, if they feel like breaking you off a little bit, then they'll break you off a little bit. You can't just take money off the top because you feel like this money is owed to you. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So, damn. all right, let's continue on. We already got. So Effie's trying to get back in Tariq's good graces, but Tariq is telling her no. And she's trying to say, well, I told Kane not to unalive you. He was on campus. But I mean, that really isn't, that isn't good enough because you told Anya. Well, you told Noma about Anya, and she told us, which we know that Effie is one of the smartest individuals in this whole crew. When we...
Book smart, it goes Effie, Diana, Tariq, and then everybody else just falls in line. But when it comes to like technology, Effie is the smartest one out of all of them. So when she told Tariq, I wasn't thinking when I told Noma about Anya, that's some bullshit. Because Tariq came and got you out of jail. Kane came in there. And then when you got released, Tariq showed up. But you were thinking, even when Tariq took you back to the spot where Lauren was at, you were thinking then because you came up with the truth. But you lied to Tariq then. And then, oh, my God, Effie. It's just piling up. It's just piling up on top. This is why we call her Leffy, y'all. Because everything that Effie says is a lie. She always lying about something. We ain't got the truth out this girl in four, five seasons. Damn. Now, I think Booksmart, I think Diana got Tariq. Think about it. Tariq went to a private school in high school, Choke. We don't know where Diana went to school. Diana came to Stansfield and got into the advanced classes. We don't know what her, like, yeah, he was tutoring to re, uh, Zeke, but hell, I could tutor Zeke. That shit's easy. All you gotta do is get that nigga a C. He, he a hooper. But Diana came up here, no college experience, jumped in, and the, remember, she came a whole semester after all of them and got into the same classes, and she's keeping up with them. Plus, plus, I know we, we on Effie's story, but let me just break this down for you. What would you do if your son was at home crying all alone on the bathroom floor because he's hungry? And the only way to feed him is to sleep with a man for a little bit of money and Tariq is gone. Somewhere selling rock now, in and out of lockdown. See, Diana, not only is she in school, she trying to raise a little baby. She also trying to offer her mama. Diana got a lot on her plate. And she still got these good grades. <laughs> All right, let's get back on, on. Let's get back on track. Book, yeah. I say technology. I got Effie at number one because she set up the whole. You know, what I'm saying all frap, no cap. Tariq is more. Tariq is book smart, but he's more. You'll know say he's more savvy than all everyone else. Well, even Kane, he's more savvy than them as far as street smarts. He's been doing this shit since he was like 12, 13. All right. But anyway, this is Effie's story, and she comes to talk to Tariq. She's telling Tariq, hey, are we good? Let's squash this. You know what I mean? My bad. I wasn't thinking. She was lying. But Tariq says, hell no. So from here, from here, she goes to Diana. Hey, Diana, I got to talk to you. <laughs> President Ryder tried to plagiarize his writing. Yeah, but I mean, hell, I could write a 15-page uh, article. Don't mean it's gonna be good. But he was he was also telling Tariq's story too. <laughs> hey, damn, Jabari was that was probably one of the dumbest deaths, too. Not like he definitely needed to go, it wasn't a dumb, uh, dumb on alive. And the shit that he did to get killed was dumb. Like him, like his whole situation was stupid. He could have just continued to knock down the 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 you know, he wasn't supposed to, but the, the assistants and the teachers, he could have just continued that, but instead, this nigga. Was worried about them bum ass books. What up, Walter? Oh, we got everybody coming in here tonight. What up, Nina? All right. So Effie wants to talk to Diana. And the reason she wants to talk to Diana is because it's like, shit, I need some kind of help. I need somebody to help me do Now we will know we know what's going on with Diana at this point. We don't know who the pappy is, but Effie shows up to the candy shop. And once they get to the candy shop, they like, let's go into the bag and let's do a little bit of talking. Now, I'm not sure what Effie's plan. I mean, we know she's gonna try to work with the Russians, try to get in with Noma, but when she came here to talk to Diana. I was thinking this is one of the worst adversaries you could have. Diana ain't really, she definitely ain't built for none of this. But I guess I was looking at it like, okay, we could use this as a hub. But this is where we say that Tariq has a little more street smarts as far as 
we can't be working back on campus. Now, that might work out with Elle, and we'll see where that's going to go when we get to his story. But she's telling her, listen, if we're going to be working with Noma, we need to figure out a way to make some extra money. We got to figure out a way to get on top of the game. Diana's thinking about something else. You know what I mean? She got that, you know what I'm saying, that, that, little, that little piece of equipment that notifies you six days earlier. <laughs> the first response, you know what I mean? Six days sooner. So that means this is February 22nd, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17. But well, she ain't learning six days early. She just took this thing the same day. Oh, she took it on the 22nd. Dang. It'd be like that, too. FBI out here wilding out, and Diana's the one that got knocked up. <laughs> what up, Ethan? And that's how it'd be, too, man. The wild ones, they be out here. <laughs> no worries. Diana, well, shit, never mind. They both college students. They both letting everybody just jump off in that thing. So Diana got Diana's wild story. All right, Effie's got to go talk to Noma. Fuck all that. <laughs> Let's get out of here. She got to go talk to Noma. Now I'm not sure is this is this leather or is this like waterproof? Like I was looking at this when I was watching the episode. I was like, man, this looks like something the gingerbread man would wear. What is this? Was it like leather or is it a, a like a, a plastic? What is what is this, Noma? But anyway, Effie shows up and she says, I request a larger piece of the pie. Now I don't know why she's walking. Effie came in there like this. I like to request a bigger piece of the pie, Noma. I've been putting in the most work, Noma. I would like 20% of everything. Noma's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> look at hey, look how Effie came in here. Effie came in here. <laughs> hey, the security guard, like, hey, wait on the lady. Now you hear in the background. You got Obi talking. Noma, what do you want me to do? Can we really trust those kids? And Noma's like, shut the fuck up, Obi. You tried to grab my ass last week. He's like, I didn't try to. I was trying to help out. So Effie comes in here like she's She-Hulk. And she's like, I request a larger piece of the pie. Now, that's a wild way to ask for a raise. Imagine going into your boss's office, bossed up. Hey, I would like a bigger piece of the pie. So she's saying, listen. If I can get you more income, if I can get you a new pipeline, if I can open up negotiations with another said organization, then how about hooking me up? Well, she said, with who? And Effie said, the Russians. Now, the first thing, I mean, we seen the trailer, but we were all thinking last year. Last year, we had three Russians. Well, one of them was the son, too. So we had three Russians on the live last season. There we go. Contract. Okay, so we had the two Russian mob members. We had the two Russians and the, uh, and the boss's son. So we had four Russians unalive last year just by the Tejada family off the top. Like, So for Noma to be like, all right, Effie, we good. Damn, where we at? She's like, listen, you got 24 hours. Now, okay, we know it's TV. Think about it. You're on the clock right now. I just want you to think about what time is it? 8.50 is about to be 3 o'clock Eastern, right? Just think about it. In 24 hours, your task is to go and talk to whatever the most ruthless gang in your city is. Not only talk to them, negotiate with them 
to go do business, let's just say with your boss at work. You got 24 hours to go over there. So it's about to be three o'clock. So about mm, you got about four hours to go over there and talk to them. That'd take you to seven. And then you got to meet up at nine o'clock. 24 hours to go and talk to the most ruthless people in your city and try to convince them who you've never, ever spoken to. Hey, my boss want to work with you. Let me tell you something. Noma and them, they probably just had to cut my hand off. They might have to cut both my legs off because if I came in here and told Noma, give me 24 hours, I'm going to go talk to the Russians. It ain't happening. I'm sorry. I just don't know if I got the gift of the gab to go in there and tell the Russians, listen up. Y'all niggas is doing business with me now. You feel me? I'm going to be the liaison between y'all and my dog, Noma. You know what I'm saying? Big dog. Roo, roo. 24 hours, man. Shit, I'll be dead by nine. So anyway, she gets the 24 hours. And from here, Effie's on it. Now, when she goes over here, she has an interesting approach. She goes in here and she sits down like she runs the place. Now, you would think that the Russians would have way more security, especially after this place had been shot up. They renovated it real nice, though. It's real nice. No ruthless gangs unless you're considering neighborhood watch. Oh, no. There's some gangs in your hood, Kendall. You just don't know. <laughs> if you want, if you don't know where, if you don't know where the most ruthless gang is in your neighborhood, if you live in a nice area, go to the HOA. You can start right there. There, Those are some thugs in there. The people in the HOA, they be on your ass. They call it, your, your grass is too high. You can't have people parking on the street. Like, nigga, first of all, I pay my taxes so they can park anywhere on this street that they want to. I got uh, regulations on the grass. I can't have the music up. Like, get the fuck out of here. The biggest crooks in the world. But anyway, so Effie pulls up in here and she's like, listen, I want a drink. And she said, I want 50 grams of your finest vodka. Your friend is Volker. So she sits down and he's like, all right, bet we're going to drink with you. Now, what's interesting is Effie pulls a P. Diddy. Not in the sense of a freak off, but in the sense of, listen, I'm a hacker. You could use someone like me on your side, not only to protect you and your organization, but to protect your daughter. Now, I did a little research, and I found your daughter's Instagram. She got 300 likes on here. She ain't really popping like that. But I also see that she wants to get into Princeton. So Effie is taking everything that we were talking about earlier with her being able to hack. She's a, because uh, it's what, a white? It's a white and a black hacker. A white hacker is someone that does, like, hack for good. Then you got a black hacker that hikes for, I mean, hacks for, like, financial gain and different shit like that to mess up your computer. So the white hackers, they go into shit to try to help people out. Now, Effie, she could feel sad. Is a, is a, is a, you know what I'm saying? She's on that fence right now. But what she's saying is she'll do exactly like they did for Diddy's son that went from New York to playing football in UCLA when he definitely wasn't qualified for. She's going to change the backstroke times. She's going to speed them up a little bit. You know, in, in any kind of racing event, like 0.5 seconds, 0.2 seconds, that can make a huge difference. Now, Princeton, they ain't that big on swimming. They're more of a, you know, saying academic. I don't even know what Princeton is good for. I know it's an Ivy League, but I don't know what they, like what their main focus is. I don't know. I never, you know what I'm saying? I got accepted into Berkeley in 22, 22, 23, but I didn't go. I finished up at Arizona. But he's like, all right, listen, we'll do that. We'll do that. She's like, all right, well, let's meet at nine o'clock. And I said, damn, okay. Effie, she's making it happen. She's making something shape. We got a hundred people in here. Can we get, you know what I'm saying? Can we get like 80 likes? Maybe we had like 55. We over there struggling. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Um, I think the Discord is pinned in the chat, but we're going to keep it going and we're going to put the Discord in there. Or Kendall, if you can put the Discord in the chat for me, please. So from there, when's the next time we see Effie? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's real brief. This is when everyone shows up and everyone's wondering what the hell is going on. 
Because Effie shows up with the Russians. We know Monet popped out. We'll get to Monet's story in a minute. But Effie's here with the Russians to meet up with Noma. Monet heard that the game is different. So she's here to talk to Noma to try to straighten some shit out. I don't like. Monet just got the fuck out the hospital, hopping out the car, talking about this my city. We don't know you. We are not the same. We are not one of y'all. Monet popping up talking about this my city. I run this, Noma. You ain't doing nothing. The Russians pull up like, oh, no disrespect, but it's that Tejada bitch. Who? You calling me a bitch? And now they going back and forth. We supposed to be telling Effie's story, but Effie's like, what the fuck? What is Monet doing here? Because everyone knows Monet just got up out the hospital. She didn't got shot the fuck up. So Monet out here talking about this is my city. She waving that gun around. And I'm thinking someone's going to like me. I ain't going to lie to you. Don't give me a gun. You already know I'm foul. I might, I might fuck around and shoot somebody. There's too many guns in there. I'm like, man, fuck it. We need to get to shooting before they get to shooting. Now they say... um. When we went to war against the British, the British are coming. The British are coming. They said the war started because someone shot, but no one knows which side shot. Was it the Brits or was it us Americans? At that point, we weren't Americans. We were the 13 colonies. But they said that that war started because someone fired off a shot and no one knows who fired the shot. But that's how it would have been out here. We all sitting around. I'm nervous. The Russians then pulled up. We already been beefing with these niggas for a season and a half. Then we got Monet over here, and I'm looking. I'm like, now I got to get two guns. So now I'm looking both ways. I got that goddamn one on the Russians. I got to have one on Monet because Monet is kind of reckless. Monet would kill both her baby daddies, and she got her son lined up because she didn't tell the whole story and didn't tell nobody that it was a whole bunch of bullshit. So now I got a gun on Monet, and I got a gun on the Russian. But then I'm kind of like, man, Noma crazy because if you remember when we first met Obi, she just slashed this nigga's face up. So I'm looking like I got to watch Effie also because Effie went behind Tariq back and told no more about Anya. So I'm like, man, I don't know who to trust out this motherfucker. So at this point, my brain is just moving too fast and my fingers, they itching. They itching for that paper. Bow! So I may have shot somebody. Now we got us a whole war going on out here. But all of this started because Monet popped up. We don't even know why Monet's fucking here. This ain't Monet's city. Monet ain't got no work telling Noma it's my city. You work for Mon you, you work for Noma. This is the shit that goes on in my mind. I'm looking around like, man, there's a lot of guns out here. Like, look at this. Noma's pointing the gun at Monet. Monet's pointing at the Russians. The Russian is pointing at Noma slash Obi. Obi's pointing at them. He's shooting across from Noma. Effie's sitting here with no weapon. This is some shit right here. This is some wild shit right here. And in real life, no one's walking out of this thing alive. In real life, someone's letting off and it's over with for everybody. Now, from here, Monet ends up passing out. Everyone shakes the spot. Monet passes out and Effie is the hero. Effie picks up Monet and we get another flashback. But after they drop her off, we're going to finish up uh, Effie's story. Effie shows up with Kane, and this is when we realize that it's February 22nd, and she makes a deal with the Russians. She shows all of these guns. She gives him the file saying, hey, your daughter is good. And he's like, listen, we'll do this deal, but I'm only doing the deal if I'm messing with Effie. So that's where we are now. That's where we are now. Effie made the deal with the Russians. We are off the clock. Now let's talk a little freely. You know what I mean? What are we thinking about Effie, man? What are we thinking about Effie at this point? She did hook up the Russians. 